truth? Oh, I'm all ears. Okay. The truth. I always tell the truth, even when I lie. Why do you find it so hard to believe? Why do you find it so easy? It's never been easy! You want answers? I think I'm entitled. You want answers! I want the truth! All I'm offering is the truth. Nothing more. And hello, podcast land. We are back with another edition of Truthful Talk. We are a podcast that talks about whatever comes to mind that day and that's uh, and we try to be as truthful as we can when we do so which is mm-hmm. which is where the name comes from but it's good to be back i'm marco natalie is hello is here once again yeah and today we're very excited because on with us on video i think for the first time and uh and here like all three of us together is the amazing samantha de george my Hello. amazing wife. Hi, Sam. Hello, Yay. my people. Beow, beow, beow. Beow, beow. How are you? I, I, I think I could. I, I can do even it, do please. that. Should I do that? Right. <laughs> All right, so we even have wow. that. That, that was, was like an that, intro. Was, that was an intro. It was a little loud. I got to get used to these things. How about just like a regular one of uh-huh. those? Yes. And I think that's better. Absolutely. So. <laughs> All righty. It, it's great to have you on with us uh and all three of us to sit down and just kind yes. of have a conversation and so thank you for being here yeah yeah for sure so excited <laughs> so uh you know the last time we were on we of course we call this truthful talk because the last time you were on with me just a, a few episodes ago we talked about your journey over the past year and through uh cancer through hodgkin's lymphoma and how difficult that has been so uh, I don't know if we want to revisit that today no, we're necessarily because <laughs> yeah. we did that once. Moving on, now up, we can moving move on, on to other up. things. But yes. for those of you who don't know out there, uh, Sam did deal with with cancer. I still dealing with uh, the recovery from uh, chemotherapy from Hodgkin's lymphoma. And if you want to hear all about that and and everything she's been through, look a, a couple episodes ago and, and you can see a, a journey with cancer uh, episode and, and that's the one to listen to hence the short hair hence the short hair because yeah you, you're you're growing it back though and it's growing back thicker and beautiful and curly it's like it has this volume that right it's, i know thank god for the mic it's amazing that's adorable all right so that uh, we'll take your cue you have to go for a second to check that out i will be right back we'll be right guys. back and <laughs> <laughs> and then we will con- continue with that was with so cute that yeah that's so <laughs> so somebody is is uh is, yeah you never know who's a knocking you never know who's a knocking <laughs> I, I, everything's like, everything's all good. We're you, good. You're back. Yeah, yeah I'm good. Cool. All right, I'm gonna do this line. I'm gonna ju- just adjust your camera just slightly. You know, it's the, did that take ten pounds off? <laughs> it is <laughs> a camera, right? It adds. You know, the, 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 the funny thing, we're just we're still getting used to this new space, right? We're still getting used to how it works and how these cameras work and everything else, and mm-hmm. and so we're we're going through the adjustment phase. And that's okay. Yeah, that is okay. That's okay. So what are we talking about today, Nat? Wow. <laughs> okay. So in, so I rarely get the opportunity to have both of you sitting out at oh, the same no. time because you're yeah. so busy, both of you. I have been having this question in my head that I was wondering, because I don't think I ever asked this. What, who, hmm. who are your favorite actors your top five top three Ooh. and why Oof. and then i'm gonna i'm gonna back off of the question just a little bit because i'm i'm i don't think i know that about you guys let's say top three i don't want to like make you overthink things but who comes to your minds your hearts your souls yeah that's I, do, you, do you have something that, that jumps out to you sam because that that's a really interesting one Simply because I have different categories yeah. of, of acting. Uh-huh. And so to me, it's hard to put it all together and say this one person 
is above all, okay. but I, I guess, who do I like? I, Your categories. Wait, wait, wait. I, you said different categories. Tell me more about that. You have different categories. Well, for example, dramatic or uh -huh. uh, character actors or comedy yes. or things like that. You know, okay. when I go character acting, Gary Oldman is, is of course, mm. uh, among the best because he just simply transforms. But I also love Benedict Cumberbatch as well, who yes. can do so many different things. Uh, so there's, uh, yeah. Okay, so I have those two so um, far. I, I love Denzel. I, if I had to pick one person, it would be Denzel. If I just really? had to pick one person, I think Denzel across the board, I don't know if I've ever seen a movie where I said I don't like that movie or I don't like his performance. Uh-huh. And while I may not like the plot, his performance is always very solid and his work ethic. And, and so Denzel's up there. And uh, equally to Denzel would be Viola uh, Davis. Uh -huh. and, and who, again even since her early work in television doing day player work, like, you know, mm -hmm. guest starring on this one episode of, of whatever, uh, she's been very, very strong, very committed. And I love seeing that the hard work early on pays mm -hmm. off later. She goes to the full emotional range. And since I teach emotion, I like yeah. that. Yes. So uh, I, those would be amongst my tops. Um, and, you know, Heath Ledger, uh, I loved Heath Ledger when he was alive. This isn't like just because he died type of thing, sure, which a lot right. of people do. But, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, his his portrayal of the Joker, of course, is one of my favorite portrayals in all of comic book history. Mm. Um, and I'm a huge, huge Batman fan. I, I, I was a Batman fan before being a Batman fan was cool. Okay, so not a Superman fan. So... Not as much. I, I, you know, well, here's the thing about Superman. I, you know, we just watched. Uh, oh my god, it was so good. Christopher Reeve is mm. was amazing. He was right. The original yeah, Superman. Yeah. I mean, or original as far as in the movies in the '70s and so forth. I mean, uh -huh. I know there was some that predated, but um, he was amazing. And and that whole story, we we really we really liked the human side of it. Yeah. Okay. When Marvel, the Marvel universe took over and it started becoming too actiony. Yeah, no, 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 no. That's what lost us, right? Gotcha. It was into that. Yeah, for sure. I think the original Superman was amazing. So when it comes to actors, I don't know, because we love, we have TV shows that we love, like Lost, right? I love, okay. we love the TV show Lost. And so when we look at, at you know, uh, some of the actors in there, mm -hmm. just their portrayal through that was. But you mean like somebody that like, I love yeah. watching, you know, I'm going to go old school Julia Roberts. Oh, I love oh, Julia nice. Roberts. I think she's beautiful. I think she's very natural and very mm -hmm. grounded. Uh, I love her. And... You see, if we're going old school, I loved Meg Ryan. Oh, and yeah, Michael always J. Fox. go old school. Michael J. Michael Fox. J. Fox. There was like a wholesomeness, a right? That's a good huh? one. There's like a wholesomeness, innocence, and then there was an honesty. Like yes. that Julia Roberts has. Mm -hmm. And just Michael very, J. Fox. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just very like genuine. Very that, natural. Very, very natural. Yeah. You're not, ca you can't catch them acting. And it seems as though when I think back, because Julia Roberts actually is one of mine too. And yeah. I think it, she inspired a generation, obviously, oh, with everything sure. she did. But when I think in, in Michael J. Fox and Julia Roberts together, what I feel is like they didn't have any walls up. Mm -mm. It feels like right. they're totally open with what they're doing. I don't know how to explain that. No, I completely, because that's, that's what, it, that's what I'm drawn to. To There's me, the, openness. the amazing thing about Julia Roberts is she made it look so easy that she got criticized for it. She got criticized for not being a strong actor because they didn't think she was acting because she just made it look easy. There and, was a video, hmm. all, I don't know if you've seen it, it's on YouTube somewhere, but it's her when she's, let's say, early 20s and she's in acting class and it's hmm. very, it's a beautiful, like... I guess like historical now, but old, um, but yeah. seeing those, um, there's some beautiful YouTube videos actually that have actors in acting class. There's one with cool, Angela right? Jolie that trips me out. That's very interesting. <laughs> the intensity she had. And I don't know what kind of training that was. I, I don't think it was anything Meisner based. Uh, I don't want to get in trouble, but I, I'm going to send that to you. But Julia Roberts, mm -hmm. she had, it was the same kind of thing that she had. It was like a, she was vulnerable, open, honest. She was and so that good in Aaron Brockovich. That's and that's where people I think really saw what she could actually do. Mm -hmm. She was doing it all along, but because she made it look easy, and you didn't see a character outside of her. I mean, mm -hmm. she just she brought it you know so authentically. Mm -hmm. 
you just didn't realize it. Aaron Brockovich, though, mm -hmm. it just it accelerated. People are like, oh, uh -huh. that's what she's doing. That's what she can do. And it was that was amazing. I also really loved this, uh, Philip Seymour Hoffman. Oh, I oh, I know. Yes. He again natural. Almost underplayed everything he did. And Brittany Murphy, these people. Oh have my God! I know all, all these people. Brittany that have, Murphy. That have Brittany passed. Murphy was was amazing. Well, yeah. That was another one. And there was a documentary right about her and it had said something about her being so underrated. And then when you do look back or rewatch re movies, mm -hmm. and of course it was the one girl interrupted right. yes. where it talks about the, all of their performances and uh, that her character and what she was doing was incredible of how she was able to, to step in that, in that skin and do that. Mm -hmm. And she not only just held her own, but like, according to what they were saying too, and I, and I feel it, that she elevated their performance. She brought everything up. Yeah. That it took away the, I don't say the attention to Winona or Angelina, because Angelina, I think won the Oscar for that. I oh, girl yeah. interrupted. Yeah, I but think Brittany she Brittany it was incredible, incredible performance. So I think, I think freedom, like, there's just a freedom in in their performance that I think that's what makes it very natural. Yeah. Like, there's no self-consciousness. There's no... Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Ease. Oh. Make it, it's just easy. There's nothing blocking them. There's nothing blocking them. Right. Now that you mentioned that, Philip Seymour Hoffman, I just rewatched Twister for my husband who has not seen it. And so here we are watching Twister two nights ago, however it was, and you just are marveling in this guy's yeah. ability to have the moment before and the mo like, yeah. And there was no self consciousness. It was he was just free to play, and mm -hmm. especially a movie like that where it's all imagination, you know, and how he was utilizing that aspect. And of course, it's yeah. a personalization and and about the relationships, but his character, how how offbeat he was, but how happy he was in certain things and excited to go chase these tornadoes and the terror of things happen. Anyways, it's, you should rewatch it. Yeah. It was a- I love Twister. W were you watching it to prepare for the, the new, new one? one? Yeah, for yeah, Zorin, because right, he yeah, hasn't cause... seen it. And then I, I I thought it was Steven Spielberg who uh, directed it and it's no. not, he produced it. Who, so who was the guy? Um, I can't think of it, but it's- Was it- uh, uh... It's Don- I can Google. Yeah, I, 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 I could even. guess, but, and just so everyone out there in podcast land knows, everything we say is alleged. We we don't know what we're talking about. No, so we're please, just making please stuff please up. Please fact check us. Because yeah. Of... <laughs> so yeah, correct me. Type it in. Send it my way. Help me out. Everything I say, right. I believe. So to me, it's a fact. <laughs> <laughs> it's a fact to me. I'm trying to actually Google it. Who was the director? Twister director. Did you know Lie. that Twister is a, the Top no, number three most. Blah, 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 blah. It's easy for you to say. Okay, <laughs> so top disaster movies of all time. Twister. Twister's number three. Oh wow! What's number one? What's number uh, one? Independence Day. It's got to be. No, I it's think? on that list, but it's not. Really? Mm hmm. Um, the Poseidon Adventure. Oh, that's on there too. Whoa! Oh, you! Oh, you, this is trivia. This is trivia. Oh, stop it. I can't do trivia because I want to know the answer. Come on. French guys. Oh, uh, this, so the director is uh, uh, Jean de Bont. Jean de Bont. Yeah, yeah. Who, who, yeah, he's very known for his, his action type movies. Um, very, very good director. But Steven Spielberg did executive produce it. Produce it, yeah. So, yeah. yeah living the and disaster learning. Disaster movies. Uh, this is, okay, this is interesting. So, Disaster. So, Twister, of course, Disaster. Because they, they, yeah. Poseidon Adventure, wonderful, wonderful. Uh, Towering Inferno. That is, I think, number two. Okay, so we're getting there. Towering Inferno. I, I, I'm going back. Yeah, because I... <laughs> older. Um, I, I, when you talk about like alien invasions, like War of the Worlds, are those type of things on there, is this is more like natural disaster? You know, Towering isn't... Inferno, beside Adventure, is more natural disaster. Mm. <sighs> Fast there's and Furious? There's different lists, no, but no. That, that's action-y. Same thing with a Die Hard. That's action-y. It's not a natural <gasps> okay. disaster, okay, right? Okay. So, so I don't know if this is actually a natural disaster now that I'm thinking about it. <laughs> All right. So Titanic. Titanic. Well, yeah, it was an iceberg. So it was naturally there. <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. <laughs> just, no, duh. Just literally hit it. But it was naturally there. Of course, it naturally. Titanic. <laughs> so, and this is the amazing power of, of James Cameron as a director. I mean, you think of the things that James Cameron has created. The first Terminator, the second Terminator. I mean, um, those are just amazing. Mm -hmm. 
Then he goes on to, you know, after other movies, he creates Titanic, which was the number one grossing movie of all time until another movie took that over, which was Avatar. Yep. Oh, yeah. Which, which was, was his, his movie. movie. Yeah, sorry. Right? It's like the <laughs> power of James Cameron to go from right Titanic, who helped himself. Right. I walked out on Avatar. I just want to say that. The first one? But Yes. I didn't even bother with the second one. I know. Why? No, I didn't even walk in. I did. <laughs> I'm worse, no, I'm worse was, than you. Oh, no, it was. It I know, was listen, we're going to get a lot of hate out there. We, Not, we, we are, are going to get a lot of hate. I, no, it, it's listen. Mm -hmm. Avatar is a retelling of a very common story. It's, the, it's the John Smith Pocahontas story. I mean, it's it's. It's the same thing, right? A foreign person goes to a foreign land and then fights for the indigenous people. We've seen it over and over and over again. But it was well done. He did things that hadn't been done before. Sure. I don't know. I just, I got, yeah. No, I, oh, I stop. couldn't. If you, no, no, no. If you watched it now, you would feel differently. Would I? I think so. If you want a movie to fall asleep to, that's the one. <laughs> No, the Batman is the one. The Batman. <laughs> you Which we were angry. sitting in the same theater watching when that happened. That was a, we a, that we were. That was the first movie we ever like was watched together. together. It was like so seven or even more. The cast of one of these plays that we were in. And we watched it together and that was absolutely horrible. And yeah. I think there was like one out of nine of us that liked it. And... Yeah. It was long with like <laughs> three hours of O's in there. It was so long. long. Now, to, to be clear, there's a lot of good things that were done in the movie. So when we say we don't like a movie, a lot they, there could be very specific things. Uh, my issue was the directing. Mm -hmm. I thought it looked yeah, beautiful. Yeah, the cinematography was beautiful. I thought the art design was beautiful. I thought the use of music was beautiful. So, I mean, there's a lot of great things about it. Yeah. The acting was fine. But, I mean, the actors were fine. Mm. But the direction of the acting... I just thought was very flat. And so it, it leads to, and when we're storytelling, if we don't have too, yeah, enough ups and downs, it, we just don't care. Yeah. And I think I got to the point where I just didn't care about the characters. And Batman is my favorite superhero uh, a, a comic. I mean, it's, I, if, yeah. before Batman was cool. Yeah. I, I was I was a fan and I still have the comic books. and. Mm -hmm. and and so, uh, yeah, so I was a little, little, was, little yeah. let down by by that one. A lot of a lot of let down. And it was funny because he, you know, the director came out and said, "Well, I made it for Batman fans, so I didn't want to retell the whole mm -hmm. origin story. I made it for people that already knew it. I'm one of those people. <laughs> I know it really well. I know the source material. I know where it came from. Yeah. It's like I, I under I know all of that, and I still am sitting there and saying, I, I don't care that Alfred's hurt. I no, wish, right? And you should because it's I Alfred." Should. And he's a great and and you know it was it was uh, Andy Circus. I mean, a wonderful actor. I mean, it, there's, there's such great people in it. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't. Sometimes as actors, we have to understand we can only do so much. It's not our fault. Meaning, it's it, directors and editors make us look good, or they can make us not look good. And sometimes the actors take the blame for things that really are beyond our control. We're we go where the directors tell us. Mm -hmm. That's like the new Star Wars. Yeah. Oh, which one? <laughs> or oh. ones? There's yeah, but yes, any of them. What's his name? I I, I don't. Who? The, J.J. Abrams? No, 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 no. Um, the one that. Oh my God! I'm gonna get a lot of slack for this. That's okay. Gets a I, lot of hate for his acting. I I, I Adam Driver. I, no, I, no, no, no. Who are we Star talking Wars. about? Uh, no, Star Wars. Uh, J J George Lucas before. Oh, oh, yeah, oh, you're talking about the prequels. Yeah, the one that the one no. that Natalie tried to watch as her first entry into a star. Okay, so for the Star Wars fans out there, Natalie Wait, is not you, really. Marco. Hey, look, look, come, on, come on, come on, this is important. <laughs> you haven't really seen Star Wars. No. And your first entry into Star Wars. The prequels. You decide not, and, and I know your husband kind of in, influenced <laughs> your choice on what to watch, but your first entry to watch Star Wars was The Phantom Menace which was the first of the prequels, which is episode one. And I know logically it's like, well, let me start there. Not the Star Wars movie to start with. <laughs> That's not the one to begin with. Uh, no, listen, there were several people who said, watch it in order. No, no. And so I was like, yes, I will go ahead and do that. It's chronological watch. order, meaning we watch it from the when the movies came out. Mm -hmm. But even though it's a prequel, 
So when prequels come out after the original movies, it's meant to see the original movies first. <laughs> and then you get the backstory. It's not meant to watch it in order. I have You're never so killed in my life. I've never seen a worse movie outside of like Fast and Furious nine or 10 or and I don't even know, even though. Well, and, and the issue with it is to me, if you watch it out of sequence, meaning out of the chronological sequence, the reason that we liked the Phantom Menace when it came out was nostalgia. It was the fact that we're now wow. seeing the origin of characters we already love. Okay. So we have Obi-Wan Kenobi when he's younger. We have Anakin Skywalker before he turns into Darth Vader. I mean, we have these characters that we we love, and now we're seeing how they came to be. That's Terrible. what allows us to go on that journey. Yeah. Outside of that, we don't care about these characters because you don't know them yet. Oh, okay. so therefore, you literally do not care about anything that's happening. It was painful. So who's the actor that gets a lot of slack? Oh, he was so bad in that movie. And it was because of the director. The director wanted um, him. Yeah. What's his name? Uh, why, why, can't I, why can't I think of names right now? He but... in the one after the that young, movie? The young guy. Oh, my gosh. Christian. No. Uh, uh, Hayden. Yes. Hayden Christensen. Hayden Christensen. Thank you. Thank you. Hayden Christensen. the non-Star Wars person. You're welcome. Now, Hayden Christensen and Natalie Portman. Um, cause she was pretty young when she did the star Wars movies. Uh, they, they both got flack for the movie saying their acting was flat, especially Hayden Christensen. Yeah. And that was for, he wasn't in the one you saw. He's in the next two. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. Uh, cause he plays the young kid as he gets older. So don't even worry about it. So no, those, those are not bad movies. Um, they're really not, they're better. They, you would have been better starting with attack of the clones or, but anyway, he gets a lot of flack, but it, he's actually a very capable, strong actor. Mm -hmm. And you just have to look at his other work to see that. But Lucas really, he had this this whole philosophy of the Jedi and everything else that they are very even keeled. They don't emote that much. They don't, you know, so he wanted this very flat performance for a style mm -hmm. that he was doing. And and so, but the, the actor is the one that gets the flack for it. It's like, mm -hmm. no, it's not the actor's fault. We do what the directors tell us to do. Right. Now, sometimes it is the actor's fault. I mean, sometimes if you have an untrained actor, actors that can't go to where the director is trying to get them there, but you have to look at the whole body of work. Right. That's all I'm saying is if you see a performance, don't immediately blame the actor. Watch something else that this actor has done. Right. And then now if there's a commonality, it's like, oh, wow, everything I see them in is the same. It's like, okay, well, that's probably the actor. And Liam Neeson was in the one that I, the first Star Wars that I saw. And I yes. love Liam. Yes. And it was... Terrible. Qui Gon Jinn, yes. Was well. That was his character. Yeah. Qui Gon. I am gonna get you to watch another Star Wars movie, I but don't I, think I just, so. just, just no. I, uh, <laughs> man, I, I Star Wars until the prequels came out. Yeah. Like they, they, uh, yeah. It stinks because I really did like them. They're not the prequels. It demotivated me completely. If you watch them again, the pre the prequels are better than you think. They really are. Okay. I, I know, I know, I know, but I, I, I promise. <laughs> hmm. So, yeah, I'm going to put that on the bookshelf and, you know, whatever, <laughs> who knows, I'll give it a go. Well, I'm like, you know, never say never, but it's really up there high where I'll, I can't I'll tell it. you, watch, watch Rogue One. If you still don't like anything after you watch Rogue One, then you can put it away and I'll never mention it again. Deal. Deal. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. You can watch it with me on your side. I'm whenever. good. <laughs> No. <laughs> you really liked Rogue One, so I don't want to hear about that. <laughs> you have a is short memory. You, oh, you, I have. It, it's Dory, 100%. You? Yeah. 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 I know. I don't remember it. How cute do you mean from um, Finding Nemo? Nemo? Yeah. That's Adora Dory. I love right. her. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you don't like that movie? No, no, I love, I love the movie. <laughs> but the, the, the level of short attention is, is, uh... It's fun when you're Dory. It's fun but when, when you're, you're not. <laughs> when you're Marvin, it's, it's, it's the other... <laughs> it's Mar Marlin. Marlin. No, Marvin. Marvin or Marlin? Is, is it Marlin? Marlin. Marlin. What? Marlin, yeah. Hmm. So now... I don't awesome. even know. So I, don't know. I, don't, I don't know. This is how awesome it is. <laughs> it's a... He'll say something, right? Uh -huh. We'll be talking about something and he'll say something. And then like five minutes later, I'll be like, I got this amazing idea. Oh, all the time. Right? Really? And mm -hmm. then I come and I say this idea and he looks at me and he's like... <laughs> I just said that. That's, that's what we were just talking about. Like, no I just way. said that. Yeah. I was like... Well, then I guess that's why it's a great <laughs> idea. Like, this is why 
<laughs> so I I, I've, I've gotten to the point where I just go with it. Like, oh my God, that is a great idea. <laughs> oh no. Because of course, if she thinks it's her idea, then it, it she really believes it's a good idea. Yeah. Better than if it was my idea. But I, listen, perception is 100% of reality. Uh, yes, yes, it is. Yes, that's it is. what I say all the time. Right. So <laughs> well, that's, that's it. it's my idea. I'm that's her quote. <laughs> it's mine. I took it. That's what a lot of guys do. This it's funny that like a lot of men take like they do what you're saying. <laughs> they don't listen to what women say. I have a great idea. Why don't we go ahead? And, anyways, that's really cool. we're kind of the opposite. You're kind of the opposite. Yeah. I'm the more man in the relationship. Oh, no. <laughs> We've talked about this. Yeah, we do have. Yeah, we, we, do. we are opposite. In many we ways. are opposite. <laughs> yeah. It's cute. Uh, that's so cute. It is cute. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's refreshing. Yeah. It's it, it, it in many ways. Yeah, it is like that. Mm -hmm. That's so sweet. Yeah. Did you know that getting a colonoscopy is not a guy thing? Yes. So we're switching topics. <laughs> just, just so I'm, I, okay, I'm aware of what's what's happening. We're now switching topics. This is what it's like in 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 our household. We don't we don't know where we're at. We don't know where we're going. This is okay, make so, me sound stupid, but well, I think for a long time it it did lean more as a guy because because colon cancer was was more of of I think a male thing for a long time. But I think it's. New yeah, my doctor said you got to get a colonoscopy, and I said to her, "Isn't that a guy thing?" Mm -hmm. And she lost it laughing. Yeah, Adorable. well, I, I, she's yeah, like, I've never heard that a guy thing. I'm going to start using that. Oh, and then, oh, yeah. and then she's like, "I think you're thinking prostate." Yeah, I think you are thinking prostate. Yeah, yeah, yeah and that's a guy prostate thing. exam. That, that, that is, that, a, guy that is a guy thing. Okay, but yeah, I mean, you have to check your your intestines and and make sure you don't have internally. any internally. Yeah, all your internal systems. Yeah, and that's the only way to go. It's up. It's that way. <laughs> well, there's there's both, right? There's the endoscopy, yeah, which endoscopy, goes, which and, goes then, in the, and then the other one, think, which goes up. I think they, they like double whammy if you're short on time. No, I'm getting both them both the done. Time. I actually am gonna get both done at the same time. I said, are they gonna Good FaceTime each other and meet up in the middle? I I think e that might be it. Et, e where is it? <laughs> They'll get close. I'm going through the tube. Sorry. Wow. Okay. <laughs> Science. All right. You two talk. I'll be right back, but you two continue talking. Okay. Super duper. All right. So, Natalie. Yo. What is the only part of the human body... Oh, God. ...that cannot heal itself? That can't heal itself. Cannot heal itself. An eyeball? <laughs> <laughs> an eyeball? Yeah. No. You can... Uh, an eyeball can heal... Well, you know, like... How does it? No, yeah, you injured. Get no, if like something gets in there, stuck in there, or something, I don't like. You can't like once it's gone, it's gone. But I, I mean, if you have the answer, please pray to hell. Uh, teeth. Dang it! I knew it. <laughs> I was teeth. close. I said eyeball. <laughs> teeth. I, yeah, don't mess with teeth. No, I like trivia. I see that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Trivia's fun. But down, da down, da down. Where's the button? Bam, bam, bam. I don't like it because I never know the answers with trivia, but my goodness, do I learn stuff. Yeah. It's, you know? What is the most consumed fruit in the whole entire world? Banana. It's not. <laughs> See? Like, and I feel like confident, like, duh, of course it'd be a banana. It was for a long time. No longer? No longer. A tomato? No. Because tomatoes are... Okay. It's a not a tomato. It's not a tomato. No. What is it? It's a mango. 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 No way. Yeah. Isn't that mango. weird? Mango. That's, that's very exotic. Well, like Asia, like they consume mangoes. Like it's... An apple. Have you ever eaten wait, 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 mango wait, wait, like wait, wait, an apple? Wait, 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 wait. You're talking about mangoes? Yeah. I just told you that yesterday. Exactly. <laughs> Just just to circle back around and say, this is what we're talking about. Yeah, I wanted to see if Natalie knew. No. Did you know that? No, I for sure thought bananas. I, yeah, or, or apples or grapes or, yeah. or something. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mangoes. Mangoes. Worldwide, though. but and It's because it's worldwide. Of, yeah, worldwide. And that's because of India. Because that's their number one uh, uh, produced yes. fruit. They don't export, but they, they produce it internally. And then they, yeah. Oh, I love mangoes. They, they eat it. So, and there's what? Uh, one point something billion people in India. There's a there's a yeah, lot of people like in 6. India. Six point so. five billion. <laughs> there's a lot of people. There's so. a lot. Never been, but they also eat it like. Have you eaten a mango like an apple? The skin oh, is the yeah, best yeah, part. Yeah. yeah. Growing up, we had a mango tree in our backyard, and that's how we ate them. No, I eat kiwis like that. 
You we see that's Louise. Harry. No. And I like Harry. <laughs> it means Harry Styles yeah. uh, to those oh, yes. who, who don't know. I, I live with that, like, too. You can't see the so, shrine that's behind her, the beautiful shrine. You know, it's oh, funny because because she's like Harry Styles. I'm, I'm more Taylor Swift, which is which is interesting, You're right? You're a Swifty. I'm a Swifty. Well, not not to the extreme, but yeah, I, I, I do. I completely admire what she stands for and who she is. I know. love that. Well, I think that's it. Yeah, yeah. I feel like you're either like Swifty fan. There's, there's no in between. So you probably know all the songs and everything. Some of them. Not all of them. He likes her more personally, I think. Not that you know her. Right. But Tay like, Tay? I like what she stands for. You like what she stands Sweet, for. Yeah, yeah right. I this like the fact music. that right as as a, a young female, mm. she's, she's, she's a good person. She hasn't let yeah. her fame get to her yeah. in, in this sense in a negative way she stands up for what she believes is is good in the world so i, I like that aspect that right. person and i know um what's her face katie perry is katie another Perry's one, another one. Yes. katie perry too yeah. another one she's going off the rails a little bit for me right now but yeah but she's did she haven't still, okay well she left american idol uh because she's trying to go back to her music yeah as she should no which is good which is um, good She's, I'm not a big like, fan of her latest song, but that's okay. Yeah, I haven't I, she's, heard it yet. She's, she's, I think she's redefining herself as an artist mm -hmm. is what she's going through Remember, right people, this is all personal opinions. Right. Right? Just because I don't vibe with it doesn't mean oh, it's, yeah. that's not whatever. But I, I actually don't like her last song, and I'm going to tell you why. Tell me why. Because it's called It's a Woman's World, right? Mm -hmm. And the lyrics is It's a Woman's World, and we're all living in it. And that's beautiful. Woman mm -hmm. power. Whoop, whoop, right? God willing. Yeah. But I don't like the way she's going about it. Oh. Like, uh, it's very sexual. Mm -hmm. And listen, right. there's nothing wrong with that and body positivity and sexuality and all that. I don't like the connection. Yeah. Because it feels like woman empowerment, but here's the male gaze to look at. Uh huh. Does that or make being, sense? Yeah. So yeah. that the objects of the male gaze. gaze. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it just, I don't know. It seems That's, to be a mixed message, maybe. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I, I don't personally. I haven't seen it yet, but I have heard mixed things about it. Anyway, going back to uh, kiwis, I don't know why you. Why, why are we going back to kiwis? No, it's a good. That's a good point. Yeah, because I want to talk do you about eat it. Eat the skin. The whole you eat the skin. Just like a skin of a mango, or skin of an what? apple, or skin now of a peach. But it's got August. like hair on it. Yeah, it's, like a peach it, has hair on it. A peach no. does not have hair on it. Yes, it does. No, it doesn't. No, a nectarine is Fuzzy. doesn't. A peach does. The nectarine is the smooth one. No, yeah. no, no. A peach has little hair. Smooth. No, but it's not hair. It's fuzz. It's fuzz. But it's very soft. You don't feel hair. Like on the kiwi, you feel hair. A little cactus? Isa. Have you ever tried it? Own. Have you ever given it a go? I will not. Yeah, see, but that, then you don't know. You can't. No. How do you comment on something? You don't. <laughs> you know what? You know, one of my favorite games to play with Marco is? What? Taste test. Mm. Oh, oh my gosh. My God. It's the best. You blindfold and you put, for example, Hunt's ketchup versus Heinz oh, that's, an easy, that's an easy one and then, and then uh, easy that's, you oh my it. god yes <gasps> you Listen, can. i can taste the difference in mayonnaise i can taste the difference in in ketchup yeah this is well, i love playing this mustard game. maybe not unless it. it's like Dijon. Or something. you yeah, gotta Dijon, get the yeah. same food just different brands like boar's head versus publix i've always wanted to do that Damn. but with vodka i do it <laughs> with gray goose and kettle one because i always find that that becomes like a gang where like everybody choose the side and i was like oh, no 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 yeah. no 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 and then like but you'd have to have the same temperature same everything like a science we should do it situation. and then just get drunk <laughs> just there, there you go there you go oh, you can just yeah spit over here but that, i've never done it with food oh, i would like to it's so much fun that seems like so much pressure for me i feel like i would get it all wrong I would get it all wrong. You can't get it wrong. It's what what you like more. I mean, like barbecue but, sauce. But, well, the interesting thing is that you can literally go by taste which one you like right. instead of yeah. the intellectual brand recognition Pepsi right. or of cola. what you think you like. What you right? Do you guys know that? Do you do you have a preference between soda? Do you drink soda? Uh, every now and then we drink diet Pepsi. Your diet Pepsi. There's a Pepsi Di crew there's a and diet then there's, there's Pepsi. a Coca-Cola crew. Right. Diet Pepsi is our preference. We will drink Diet Coke if we have to. So Diet Coke is more like, <laughs> yeah, like, <laughs> like gassy, like more of like effervescent. Uh huh. And Pepsi is sweeter. Yeah. Yeah. Living and learning. And you guys though, both of you are picky eaters, right? No, she's the picky eater. You're picky. I'll eat just about anything. 
He's like a vacuum sure. cleaner. Yep. Is he? <laughs> no, yeah, yeah, no. Hoover. Uh, His street name is Hoover. <laughs> yeah, I, I just about anything. Yeah. Oh, okay. So no. it's you. You're the one that's picky. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Or selective, however you want to call it. No, nah, picky is a good one. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that's okay. I don't think I am, but I think I am. <laughs> but you probably are able to then differentiate. Maybe your taste buds are, um, like, they're just uh, more aware of what's happening. Yeah. 100%. Which is a good thing to happen. Have like, yeah, you're very selective with what you like to eat. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I, I can. There's very few things that I say I don't like. Yeah, I don't like fish that's too fishy. Yeah, I thought that you don't like chicken on a on a bone. bone. Well, chicken on a bone, and it, it it just I had bad any, chicken on any, a bone one time. Anything on a bone? Uh, no, uh, ribs are great. Uh, human. <laughs> yeah. Human, human on a bone. Yeah, I mean, me. Human on a bone? Me. <laughs> Salty, I'm the oh, human yeah. on the bone. I, there's just something, I, and it's not that I won't have wings on a bone. I just prefer them off. I, I had a bad experience. Um, with I hear you. And, okay, and, so it's the chick. The chicken wings are what got so you. So it's and it comes down to what did you had a bad experience? I had a bad experience with chicken on a bone, of it being raw or something, or uncooked. Oh, I got really sick. And then yeah, uh, cottage cheese. I had cottage cheese one time that was curdled. Moldy. Yeah. Mm. And I didn't know oh, when I ate what? it, it was bad and I got really sick. And so it's like, that's even to today. And that was 30, 40 years ago. Yeah. I mean, that was a long time ago. And to today, it's like, no, I don't want cottage cheese. Yeah. That's how I feel about bananas. Whoa. That's how you feel about bananas, cucumbers. I mean, apples. That's how you feel about just about anything. You don't like a banana? No, bananas. Um... She says it like the minions. Banana. <laughs> <laughs> bananas, uh, they have, like, when they're not ripe, they are grainy. Green. They're grainy. Yeah. And then once they're ripe, they're they've got this thing in the inside, like and they're brown. No, uh, it's that, that little that, got, that, like, that part of the skin that you have to pull off. This yeah. yeah, she doesn't like that. Oh. It's it's texture, I think, okay. more than She's very serious about this. She's like, no, I'm not doing it. I'm not, not doing this. But I make banana. a hell of a mm. banana bread. Banana? Do you? Oh my gosh! <laughs> Everyone says it's good. <laughs> Can you hear the minions? <laughs> the, the minion. That, that, banana. Banana. <laughs> <laughs> I like the way I talk. I love the way you talk. It's it is adorable. adorable. I don't hear what you hear, though. It's no. cute. I'll, I'll find the minion sound and play oh, it for cute. you. Maybe banana. we can put that on the on your board there. On the board, and the we'll, we'll play it next time. Banana. Yeah, that's what we'll do. We'll, <laughs> that's the sound. That's the trivia segment. That is the trivia segment. Yeah. There. Yeah. She triviaed me without even me knowing she was going to do trivia. See? Look at that. Yeah. She so slid what, in there. So, what other questions do you have? Since you have uh, Sam here and, and both of us here for. Oh yeah. Okay. Very... Um. So, do you? Okay, Sam, as the set designer of all of these incredible, like every single play that's been up at Theater on the Edge, do you reread and reread uh, the plays? How do you go about it? Or do you read it once and you're like, yeah, I got it. And no. How do, how do you? I read for for entertainment. Mm -hmm. I read for feeling. Mm -hmm. I read it for colors. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, I read it for, for, for props. Okay. I read it for, so like I yeah, read you'll, it. You'll make a prop list as you go through. I, like, yeah. What? What you think, yeah. So I read it for different reasons. But yes, I read it several times. You do. So, but you have an intention of going in when you are reading and you go, this is for colors kind of yeah, thing. Yeah, like when I read it for entertainment, I always have a feeling. So, it, it, oh, this feels so orange to me. Wow. <laughs> yeah. So, really? Yeah. Mm hmm Yeah. So I, that's my favorite part is really reading it for feeling. What does it feel like? Wow. So you... That's how you start gathering I feel, your... I feel the colors. Mm. You feel the colors. I feel the colors of the play. And then that kind of like guides me. That's fascinating. Yeah. And then because the set that we just, that you just did last for Say Goodnight Gracie, because I'm thinking oranges, yellows, mm -hmm. the greens and all mm -hmm. that stuff that you had brought into it. Why did you feel orange and yellow? Let's go with orange. Okay. For say goodnight, Gracie. So color palette. So certain colors together create a certain feeling for me, right? Obviously the seventies, you go back in decades and you see every, every decade had its colors. Mm -hmm. uh, the fifties, you see the, the black and white with the red. Mm -hmm. um, so seventies have like a very 
hipster. Yes. Like feel to it. Clay toned. Yes. Yeah. Uh, but also like groovy. Like everybody's like in this flow. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. And to me, orange is a very flowy color. Yeah. Very, very flowy. Uh, and then the happiness of the yellows. Uh, and then the greens. I, it just, mm -hmm. I don't know mm -hmm. how to explain the feeling. You know, you hear people that have numbers cause feelings and so colors cause feelings for mm -hmm. me. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, I, think, she, she actually, I think for everybody. Uh, yeah. I mean, but no, you feel color. I mean, yeah. but you can read something. Yeah. And you see it in color. Right. And yeah. I see it in color. That's amazing. And I don't do that. So it's, that's why when we work together, I, I. Like when you read it, is it like you're, is it like a logic? So it's, it's emotion. So you're so reading I, you it. You feel mm -hmm. emotion when you read it. Like you feel. Yeah, like a, I'm, I'm already directing what I'm reading. So I, I'm reading it as the emotional but it's not color, it's it's feeling. Okay. It's in other words, it's it's what's driving underneath the text is what I'm yeah. getting out of it. And um, but no, I don't get color out of it, which is why as like a director, you I come need, to me for color palette. Well, yeah, I need yeah. a designer that can do that. I need someone that understands what colors. I mean, I can <clears throat> try to logically come to a conclusion of what colors I think are good, but but you nail it every mm -hmm. time. And so, but emotion also, I do feel emotion too because they're the colors can feel, um, you know, a, a, a yellow that's more sad is a darker yellow, you know, mm. an orange that is going through something yeah. is going to be a little dirtier. Orange that is going through something is yeah. going to be a little dirtier. Yeah, it's Which going to be a little amazing sadder. amazing to me because that's that's just that's a whole wow. art form in itself is is color theory and color palette. Not that because you come from it, not even from an intellectual standpoint. You just know. Yeah, and it, it's literally just a feeling. So what I'll do as a director is, is I'll say, OK, this is what I want the characters to feel like to the audience in this scene. She'll figure out the colors. OK. She'll figure out the wardrobe and the design yeah. and, and all of that. And yes. every color has levels. Every color has levels. Black right. doesn't just mean dark. Like there's different levels to black, to all colors. Wow. So it depends what you're feeling and what you want that to look like. Since uh, Say Goodnight Gracie had what? It was five of us, five yeah. actors on set. Yeah. Did you already have colors for each, like color palettes, if you will, for each character? Or was it something that comes up because the actor chose it kind of situation or gravitated? Or did you, do you feel like you kind of, you can dress an actor based on where you're Yeah, I have an, an initial feeling, mm -hmm. but I love collaborating yes, with the actors. Is. Yeah. Because you guys have your own journey. Yes. And you do all the work on your character. So you're going to know your character more than anyone. Mm -hmm. So I take that super, like, almost stronger than what I initially felt. Yes. A lot of the times, it, most of the time it aligns. <laughs> yeah. Right. Um, but for example, your character, Ka Catherine, she was very free. Mm -hmm. She was very in touch with her femininity and her woman power and her sexuality. So I wanted something flowy. Mm -hmm but also um, feminine. And we got you this beautiful dress. Mm -hmm. And it was bright because Catherine is, she was, she, was the, she was the light to yes. me. Catherine was a light. So you had the pretty colors. Mm -hmm. You had the bright ones mm -hmm. where everybody else was very muted. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you came in with these beautiful flowers. And, and it did take... Um, some time, maybe maybe two or three uh, journeys, or you know, to the to awesome find set. That. Where what was I'm set? Not the set, the the store. What was the name of that store? I should know the name of the store. Uh, Dickies. Dickies. Oh, oh I'm putting that out, out there. Dickies. Yeah, 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 yeah. Duckies. Is it duckies or dickies? Is it duckies? No, no, no. no. It's, it's definitely duckies. It's duckies because it, it's a reference <laughs> from, to the yeah, character from, from the John Hughes film. There you yeah, go. Yeah. Okay, it's, see. It's duckies. 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 So yeah. if you guys don't know, that's a great store. That is an incredible store. It's a hidden treasure. But yeah, we did, we went and we tried on different things. Yes. And that, when you put that on. I felt, I felt good in it, meaning I felt free and flowy. And then, yeah, you know, it felt right. It Everything else just felt off in a, its own way. But this one felt so right. Yeah. 
So the, yes, the, the orange was a perfect was color. Orange on the yeah, the dress on top. But it was an orange salmony orange. Salmon-y. It was right. It was mm-hmm. a happy orange. Yes, it was a happy orange. It was a happy orange. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So yeah, so I do that with each character, um, and I I love talking through with the actors. It's like, what are you feeling like? Mm-hmm. Um, and then just hearing what you guys have to say, and then we kind of put things together. I remember yeah. Fahim Bacchus w- working with you when he was playing Bobby. Mm-hmm. He went through actually a couple of different iterations that um, there maybe he thought that maybe this was going to be the the costume, but he pulls you to the side and he's like, no, like, no, this no, no. The, I yeah, gotta no. find him. Right. Well, no, Bobby evolved, actually. Yeah, when Bob, we started yeah. Bobby, uh-huh. um, we always knew Bobby was this like cool guy like Mm -hmm. cool musician, but I didn't want him to be like a typical musician. Um, I don't know what that means, but uh, rock star type of, no, I didn't Mm -hmm. want that. Um, And then, and when we first did Bobby, he was too nerdy. Like his hair was too put together. It was too hair sprayed. And I was like, we were like, no, we're not feeling this. Mm -hmm. Bobby needs to be a little sexier. Sexier. Yeah, yeah. He needs to be like, he needs to be like suave. Yeah. 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 Flowy. Very, very flowy. Yeah. Bobby mm-hmm. was very flowy. So his hair, he let it grow longer and then. And it took time. It did. That wasn't something that it evolved. It, it, it evolved, did, but like it evolved said. into the perfect version. Mm-hmm. I tell you what, he had fans in the audience. Oh, from sure. all he, ages. Oh, yes. I just yes. kept he hearing sure it. I was like, oh, yeah, I know. Like, oh, my goodness. Bobby yep. was a masterpiece. It was interesting because, you know, <laughs> Sagan and Gracie is a, a comedy, at least through most of it, until we transition into drama. But. A sitcom. We did a lot of archetype work, mm-hmm. but I mean, for us, Friends as a reference, the show Friends, yes, was a big one, huge, right? Happened, yeah. So you were more of the Phoebe character, yeah, mm-hmm. right? Where where Bobby was the Joey character, and the same issue that they had when they were casting Friends is we need someone who is lovable and mm. is attractive and everything else, but also humble and and you know he needs to be a good person yes joey evolved and, from friends and joey evolved when yeah you as, him in as season well one the, he was very like stereotypical the the, the italian the italian yeah. with the black and the black jacket and that is another like testament to um for the for the people producing it and the creative minds that are producing it that things evolve and it's okay yes. to, for things to not work out a hundred percent right out of the gate at you know you're hitting a grand slam home run you know sometimes that takes away um people from trying to be creative mm-hmm. because they're like i want it to be perfect and oh my god it's not and then they kind of implode but that's a beautiful example because friends had it seinfeld yeah. had it and these right. are massive things that, and then they evolve so to be open still at that level right. when you're putting it on already and you're saying, you know, this what let's let's didn't work. Let's just get let's tweak it this way, whatever. Yeah. It's constantly I love that. working. Yeah, I, I always say, and I try to teach the students this too, that through a rehearsal process for a play, 90% of what we do gets thrown out. Mm. Because we're playing and we're trying things and we're adapting things, and the majority of what we do, we don't use. Mm-hmm. Because but it leads to the parts that we do. Mm-hmm. I mean, you think about how much time we sit around the table and just talk and talk and talk and talk. There's so many ideas that come out that then lead eventually lead to what we end up using on stage. But the initial, all those initial and middle steps, they're just steps that get us to what we end oh, up I think, using. Yeah, I think it's part of the process. I think all those steps are necessary. Well, but, they are. Yeah. But people, like what Nat was just saying, though, people will think or stop themselves from being creative because they want they want to get to the part that works right away. Mm. And it's like, no, you got to go through. There's 90% of what I explore in rehearsal we don't use. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 90%. But you have to be willing to go to that place. Yeah. Express it, give it a go, give it a try. You know how I'll, sometimes people um, say like acting, you have to be comfortable making a fool of yourself kind of way. Like basically jump. You have to commit to, and then with your team, with your director, that you will find, you have yeah. to have faith that eventually you will find that centeredness. But yeah, you cut all the fat, if you will. You don't use all of it, but it, it just informs you 
in a different way. I mean, we're, I'm teaching in a class right now. I'm teaching, uh, these are advanced students. I'm teaching them animal work. And with animal work, you know, part of it, they, when they get logical about it, they're like, well, how do I know I'm picking the right animal? I'm like, there, there is no right animal. Mm -hmm. <laughs> There's, it's just, it's, it's a way of exploring and playing that leads you to something. Mm -hmm. And amazingly, we pick animals that, that seem to work. And sometimes we pick animals and we go through the exploration and it doesn't work, but it's just, it's just a sense of play. Yeah. And so that's why when we do it in rehearsal, it's like, okay, well, let's see what it leads to. Right. So like when you were performing, were you using your animal? Well, not directly, but did it lead to an exploration of how this person could be? And mm -hmm. then you explore well beyond that. Yes. Yes. And that's what we have to do. Or, or Ginny's accent. Mm -hmm. Ginny's accent came out of just an open mode play session. We, you know, I, I remember things were starting to get stagnant and closed down. So I was like, oh, we're just going to play. Come in and let's just be ridiculous. Pick accents mm -hmm. that, you know, that you want to try. I want you to mimic characters. You know, like I forget if someone like Joe Pesci or, or walking mm -hmm. or something. So we're just going to play and just be, be silly. And uh, Audra came in with uh, some like a Southern-esque accent. And, you know, in play mode, we're just doing that. We're playing. We're not trying to figure anything out. We're just stepping into our creativity. And out of that, I remember, I, I even have recordings of it. I remember came mm -hmm. home to Sam and I was like, this is weird, but it works. Mm -hmm. And I think I played it to you, you right? Did. And you're like, it does work. And I was and like, whoa. We would have never, I would have never discovered that. We would have never chosen for the character of Ginny to have a Mississippi Southern accent. Mm -hmm. It came out of a play session. And then all of a sudden, everything like started snapping into place. Yes, she's not from New York, which is where the play takes place. Mm -hmm. She's not from New Jersey. She's she's a transplant that came in uh, with all these other people. I don't know, did, what, did you ever, where was your character from? You, you weren't No, from. no, we tried, accents we did try, but they just, it just wasn't it. But did you ever discover, were you, was your character from New York or from Jersey? Yes. Or were you, were you from New York, traveling yeah. around? You were mm -hmm. from there too. But since I had traveled, because I was an airline stewardess, that's right. All of that you traveled, had... so you right. You had more of a hmm? yeah. Could kind of be open to whatever. <laughs> and then we gave Bobby the the Jersey accent. Bobby had the Jersey accent. And I just didn't want to do a play where everyone had a Jersey accent. Right. It was just like this no, is, yeah. It's it, no. This is going to be annoying. Uh, if listening sure. to too many people doing the same accent, it's like no, no, no. We need to have different ones. So then we have Bobby with the Jersey, and then we have uh, uh, Audra with the, mm -hmm. the Southern, Jenny. and then everyone else just uses a version of their mm -hmm. own. And it's like this works. Yep, it works Both really well. Them. And they worked. I mean, I know that they worked hard on it, but they it was just effortless by the time they were there. Um, by the time we were in the rehearsals and they were able to use their accents and use it in line rehearsal. Yeah. You know, oh, to make so sure, great. you know, also, which is nice to warm up the mouth and the voice mm -hmm. for them to have, you know, that open space. Yeah. And, but, you know, for you artists and actors out there, just understand that artistry is about playing and discovering and trying things. And it's perfectly okay if the majority of what you play with doesn't work out. It doesn't do anything. Sometimes we, we have a play session and we get nothing out of it. But, it, you know, when I say nothing, we're, we don't take anything out of that play session that we're directly using. But you still played and you're opening up your creativity and you're, you're trying things. Mm -hmm. I think you do the same thing with set design, don't Comple you? You have to, have to it, play and try all, things. It's all about play. It's all about play. That's how you figure things out. Right? Because if not, it's logical. Then I'm, then I'm figuring out in my head and then... Mm -hmm. I'm not allowing myself, you get stuck, then you yeah. get tunnel vision and then you get stuck. And I find for my sets that when I overthink it, oh, I get super stuck. Yeah. And I, I think like for everybody that's, let's say, especially actors or set does all this creative space. Now that you mentioned that, it's like a light bulb that goes off and it's like, wow, all the students and all the people I've worked with, that's what's happening. When they get stuck, it's because they want in logical mode completely. Yes. And they don't know why they're overwhelmed or exhausted. You know what I mean? Because mm -hmm. it just takes, it closes something. Completely. Or it, it, when you overthink the it. Energy. It takes mm -hmm. energy to be logically and think. Yeah. And it's just interesting. Yeah. I mean, for me, an aha moment to see that for them or for myself and be aware of that. And I mean, you know, Sam, the amount of sketches you do for a set, 
I mean, there's so many trying to figure out just the right placement, just the right everything. Yeah. It takes a while to go through all that. It does. It's a, it's a process, but it's a, it's a fun process. Oh, it's, a, it's an amazing process. Yeah. That's why the sets are so good, though, is you're creating them and discovering them and, and, and just, I don't know, you're trying new things mm -hmm. and seeing what works. And but the cool I definitely thing is find it, when I overthink it. And, and I'm like, oh, this this is uh, this isn't working. It's not working. It's not working. And it's and then I'm like, I gotta take a step back. Yeah. Because I'm I'm overthinking it. Mm. You know, I gotta take a step back, and then it's like, what do I feel? Mm -hmm. What does it feel like? Yeah. And then and then I go, and then it's like, oh, okay, this feels much better. And then it works out. And then it works out. Yeah. Oh, that's the amazing thing. Play. Yeah. Play. That's it. That is artistry, and that's and any art. I think dance and music and, and like give you know. yourself permission to play. Mm -hmm. It's okay. Yeah, you have to. You're right. Give yourself permission to do that. Right. Because the logical brain is like the parent that wants you to come in from playing. <laughs> it doesn't want yeah. you to play. No, how dare you play? How right. dare you? <laughs> Focus on the the things you have to think about: math and yeah, science and, and English. Too, and, right? <laughs> so we just don't give ourselves permission to play. Mm -hmm. This wow. is true. Mm-hmm. So one more question, and that's all we have. One more that's, question. We are, I be, do you believe we're there already? Oh my gosh. Okay, okay. And let me say, so I want to play. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. Are you guys going to do something soon coming up? Yes. Meaning theater-wise? Theater-wise. We want to. Uh, we we want. You don't to. have to say anything about well, it. Well, no, no, no. no, it's it's really just you know we've been on a holding pattern since sure. since Sam had, sure. had cancer. It was like okay, we, you know we needed to adjust time to go into her health, and the only thing we really had to put down uh, that made sense was the theater. Yeah, the ninth full time job. You guys right, have. exactly. <laughs> the one that we volunteer all of our time for. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, we've been talking about how do we bring theater back. Uh, now, I don't think we'll get back to cinematic theater, which is the detailed sets, mm -hmm. probably until mid next year. Mm -hmm. Because Sam's just not not ready um, sure. physically for that. But, uh, but yeah, we want to get back to black box theater. Okay. And hopefully something later this year. Mm -hmm. uh, with more black box early next year, we do want to get back to, to doing those things. They're a little bit easier for us, I think, to put on, mm -hmm. a little bit less strenuous for, for Sam. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, we can still kind of ramp back up um, theater on the edge black box until we go back to, to cinematic theater. Well, I think that's going to be exciting for fans of theater on the edge uh, to hear for the actors out there who, you know, to prepare for certain things because not for nothing, Black Box is um, the challenge for the actors. <laughs> yes, it <laughs> In is. Order to, absolutely, it is. So I just, I that's very exciting to hear and know. And, because you know? It's, it's really cool to have the immersive environments for actors to play in, but you're right. It, it, the challenge as an actor in black box is you're in a black box. I mean, you're, you're in a stage, which is just has black walls, black floor. Mm -hmm. And so, which gives the audience the ability to imagine mm -hmm. the environment. But we also, as actors now have to imagine the environment. But so as it, soon it as I'm be... able to girl, of course, my sweets. But I think what we made, you know, so we're going to do a sample set, maybe, you know, two, three plays in black box. And if it goes well, then we'll even going forward, we'll do uh, a combination. We'll do some black box and then we'll do some uh, cinematic theater. I think and that will be incredible. Yeah. We've been itching to get back. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 But exciting. we're taking it slow. Uh, you know, we're realizing that health is number one. Absolutely. So we'll, we'll go from there. Yeah. So do you believe we're at the end? Or? Do you believe? <laughs> do you believe life after love? Sure. Sam, it's so good to see you. Oh, it's good to see you. You look amazing. And I love the hair. I'll thank you. Rock we'll have to have it. you back on again, and you'll have to come up with more questions. Okay. So, yeah. <laughs> okay. And we'll do that. And you can come up with more trivia. Yeah, I like trivia. I like yeah. trivia, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you can work the board. I can work the board. See, so here's the board she's talking about. So, uh, and the air horn, if uh, if we do that, right? 
Right. You're so welcome. That, that's, I, there's some reason that's the one you love. Duh. The air horn. <laughs> like, why? Yeah. Vern, yeah. So, yes. <laughs> yes. yes, 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 yes You're so thank welcome. You, thank You're you, welcome. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. So we'll have, to, we'll have to play with that now that we have sound effects for, for yeah. the show. <laughs> we'll have to awesome. do that. But, but again, th thank you so much for, for coming on today. Yeah, for sure. And now, once again, thank Snaps. you. So, and thank you to all our listeners. We really appreciate you, uh, you signing on to, to listen to us. Uh, please let, let, uh, you know, let people around you know about us and, and let, if you think someone that, you know, family or friend or otherwise might, uh, might enjoy the episode, please spread the word. We would appreciate it. We also, we are on, uh, all of the podcast platforms to listen to, but if you would like to watch us and watch us do this thing, the video version is on our YouTube channel. It's truthful acting youtube.com slash truthful acting. You can go to that YouTube channel and you can see us do our thing. But un duper. Yeah. until next time, uh, which will be back soon, we will uh, we'll, we'll see you again soon. But please remember, treat yourself with kindness and reward yourself for the risks that you take. All right. Bye, everyone. Bye. If you'd like to learn more about our studio and what we do, you can find us online at truthfulacting.com. And check out truthfulactingonline.com for our learn at home at your own pace courses. So what I told you was true from a certain point of view. You must unlearn what you have learned. I know what you're trying to do. I'm trying to free your mind, but I can only show you the door. You're the one that has to walk through it.